respected chairman and my teacher dr kalraji and the august audience uh, at the outset i would like to express thanks for inviting us and among all the presentations i think our presentation is a little bit odd man in the sense uh, we are not talking of the impacts of the climate change but we are the people who can provide the data in a spatial temporal domains which enables the people to quantify the impacts of how different scenarios are working in that context what my presentation is going to be around what remote sensing has to is offering to the climate change studies that is my main essence of the presentation and all of you know very well that observing the earth from the distance is what is called the remote sensing and once we are talking of the earth system it's not the land mass alone it is the atmosphere it's the oceans everything all put together we are seeing together so we need to take the observations covering all these different components of the earth system which as i told you it includes lithosphere atmosphere hydrosphere cryosphere biosphere all the things and another point is uh, once we talk generally about remote sensing it's only from the space platform we think but the point is now we have found out the constraints that are there with the remote sensing data from space platform alone so it needs to be and essentially augmented by the observations from different platforms from the ground from the aerial platform from the space platform in the space platform also we have got a sun synchronous platform which is in the near earth around 300 to 800 kilometers sometimes they are in the geostationary orbit at around 36500 kilometers so we need to use different platforms for obtaining data of different dimensions that's what it's going to offer we'll be seeing it now so if you see that the Uh, satellites so many satellites are revolving around the earth and these satellites have got their own orbits they they could be from polar or they could be equatorial both are essential for us because polar equatorial as well as geostationary each of them has got its own purpose generally equatorial are meant for something like megatropics recently which we have launched with the french assistance cne cnes collaboration so that is mainly meant for studying the tropical cyclones in minus 22 plus 20 degrees uh, uh, latitudinal belt whereas in the case of the uh, geostationary you know very well it's used for communication and it's a geostationary platform so it provides us the information on uh, different aspects of the weather which is useful for the climatological predictions etc and forecast and like that we have got different uh, constituents uh, which need to be monitored through different platforms so what we essentially do is uh, we try to generate the data on the bottom we have written that uh, it works for the health then it works for the disasters forecast energy water climate etc so for each of these things there's so many things are required so while observing so many points the important point is uh, as per the geo that is a global earth observations 50 essential climate variables have been identified which support the work of the unfcc and ipcc of which at least 26 out of 50 have been found to be amenable from the remote sensing data by which what i mean is we are in a position to construct the old data sets also by which we are in a position to generate a relatively longer duration data sets and then these data sets are required to be generated not only by our one country alone wherein an international consortium is required for that the geo is putting all its efforts they have got one what is called a gosic that is global observation surf uh, uh, information system center so through that uh, we are having the uh, global earth observations global ocean observations global climate observations gos gcos gtos all of them put together will form into the global observation systems and if you see what are those 26 parameters actually here this is, this will be comprising of the total list which corresponds to atmosphere ocean and terrestrial but of which uh, what i have put the in the bold uh, this one Uh, let us those are the things which are amenable from the remote sensing and in this particular context uh, the global satellite data provides we are getting from nova nasa esa umedsat cma cma that is chinese meteorological agency cas isro geo so like that there are several international organizations that have come forward to share the data with all the reanalysis products so that is a huge volume of the data which we are now getting it includes uh, the causative factors as well as the resultant factors causative factors in the sense like the weather the insulation how much is coming like uh, navin sir was telling about the aerosols we have got our own indian satellite which can provide the aerosol optical thickness 
in a real time. All these things are available in real time. Other scientists need not worry about how to generate AOT. We generate an AOT and provide it, and it can be made available. And uh, a very good, well uh, laid out uh, uh, data sharing mechanism also has been uh, given by the GEOs through its what is called a GEOs, Geography, uh, Global Earth Observation System of Systems, through the, which is located in the Geneva. So a very good protocols also have been provided for that, of which now my presentation, in order to cover all those things, it would take a lot, a long time. So for the audience being, most of them are from India. So what I'll try to do is, what is that uh, Indian re remote sensing satellites and the Indian Space Research Organization has to offer and how it is offering, that's what I'm going to tell you. So what we are having is we have established now a system called the National Information System for Climate and Environmental Studies, which is called the NICES. And it is located at Hyderabad, the center from which I come. So wherein what we have been doing is product development and interface of the things, wherein we develop different satellite data products. So we are having our own internal mechanisms which through which and then that is national disaster uh, emergency management. So in that we generate a lot of information data in Bhuvan, it's a, our geo portal. Then like that we are having the water uh, resources information system. Then we are having NRDB, natural resources database. So like this we are having our own historical databases. Through that historical basis we convert them into the ECVs which are required for essentially for all the climatic data analysis they are required. And these products can be made, uh, are being made available now already, as I will show in the subsequent slides. So this is what the geo portal which I have been telling you, I will show here. The Bhuvan geo portal is, uh, sorry, uh, is our geo portal which anyone can access through bhuvan.nrsc.gov.in. So we are having a visualization on the 2D, 3D, and a mobile Bhuvan also we are having. In addition to that, we provide a lot of services. In the services, we provide services on disasters, oceans, then uh, open depth uh, archives, thematic information. Like that, we provide a lot of information. I will show in detail. So through this uh, uh, open data archives, you can get the Cartesat 1 DM. Yesterday's uh, IASC people are showing, they have used SRTM DM, which is at around three arc seconds or one arc second. Even 30 meters arc, that is one arc second, Cartesat DM is available, which anyone can download. Resource at 1 ABC data now, we have made a policy that uh, the two years old data can be made available easily. It's made available freely. They need not even buy the data. And all these data sets, they can get it by just registering with us. And registration is also free of cost. Only thing is the need needs to be justified. If the need is justified, the data will be over provided to them. Then we are having IMS, Oceansat 2, uh, TCHP. So like this, uh, different information products and data sets, uh, satellite data sets are being made available. And uh, there was also a lot of discussion on the land use, what type of land use is required. For the total country, we are having the land use land cycle, la land use cover of uh, 1 is to 50,000, 1 is to 250,000. All of you know very well the implications of the variations in the scale. Urban land use is 10K for limited number of cities. Then wastelands, geomorphology. And let me tell you, I'm not just showing them that they are available through the site. If anybody wants, they can download it. And similarly, once we are talking of the climate change, we say that the intensity of the extreme weather events is going to be on the rise, then the floods and droughts are bound to come. So for that, we need to generate a, a lot of history. Then only we'll be in a position to generate, a, a develop very good algorithms and very good adaptation measures. In that context, for drought, for flood events, these are all the things that are available, which have been kept on to our uh, site. We d handle with uh, six major natural disasters, like drought, floods, cyclones, earthquakes, landslides, and forest fires. So, and in addition, on some special occasions, we also conduct the uh, heat index studies because the heat waves was happening. And not only that, uh, there is a lot of data that is also supported under the international charter for the disasters, and even for the recent uh, Phylon and recent uh, uh, Philippines uh, uh, disasters also have been supplying. So these are all the different places where, because of uh, our own onboard storage facilities and also because of the uh, international ground stations what we are having, we are in a position to acquire the data and pass it on to them as per the charter protocol. And for the climate change, the most act is, our, is also being maintained by our sister concern that is uh, Space Application Center, wherein you can get data on different satellites, right from uh, uh, Kalpana, then Insat, Oceansat, Megatropics, Saral, etc. So all these data sets what that have been written over here, they are all available. And uh, what I request is, this data that is available needs uh, some sort of a, uh, 
utilization, the rigorous utilization by the, by the people. I'll just very quickly show some of the applications what we are having. This is a global GIMS data. It is famously called a GIMS data. GIMS data is a very famous data which has got uh, the uh, data from NOAA satellite on NDVI, NOAA 7, 11, 9, 11, 14, 16. And eight kilometers data is available, and it has been when they have used so many sensors, they need to calibrate the sensors, and such type of calibrations also happened. And but for certain small residual errors, uh, otherwise this data is very good, useful. And just I will show some quick uh, uh, analysis by using the GIMS data. We are in a position to study how this start of the growing season, which is one important characteristic of the vegetation phenology, can be ge uh, generated, and by which we are in position to tell where the phenology has advanced, where the phenology has delayed. It is a total effect what we are seeing, wherein we are not isolating the effect it is because of the anthropogenic or because of the um, uh, climate change. And this is uh, about by NDVI amplitude, we are in a position to get about the information about the crop vigor and seasonal greenness. And like this, uh, we can generate a lot of information. And we have also shown the drought proneness. We are not calling this drought vulnerability. We very clearly distinguish between proneness and vulnerability. And the integrated NDVI, probability of low NDVI, and then interannual variations are taken together. And then we are in a position to tell about the proneness. And now I come back to the ECVs. If I if you see the ECVs, for all these ECVs are being now generated, we are having around five to six uh, centers of ISRO, which provide the information on atmosphere, oceans, land, and models. And one uh, Minister of Air Sciences, that is INCOIS, also provides the information with regard to the oceanic observations. And if we see a little bit more detail, what OceanSat, uh, Ocean Color Monitor, that is OceanSat has got to offer, we are in position to, we have kept all these things readily available through. Okay. Then we are chlorophyll, NDVI, vegetation fraction, albedo, chlorophyll A. Then all these things uh, at a different uh, Temporal intervals and uh, different spatial intervals, they are being made available. And some of them are there. And while in case of NICES, some other parts are being under generated. This is about the oceanic parameters, which are required for observing the oceans. And for uh, certain specific things, by using a very high resolution data, we are in a position to provide these inputs also there on different stages of uh, generation of the data. and. Now, this is just one or two examples I will show you. This is the one which is generated using our own ocean sat for the total global observations. Because now, we have got our station, one in Antarctica and one in uh, uh, another place, I am not remembering. So, because of that Antarctica uh, station, we are in a position to have all the, at least 10 out of 14 orbits data, we are in a position <coughs> to get it, reprocess that data and generate that information. Sir, this is that AOT, what I was telling you. Aerosol, this is available on a daily basis which you can use in our model. And it is at 865, and we are having one more at 555 also to provide the transmissive values. And coming to certain other examples, uh, if you, one kilometer, 15 day, because for global studies, once we are dealing, we should not think of very small resolution, fine resolution. So a little bit coarse resolution data are available. NDBI, vegetation fraction, albedo. Now, if you want to give the land use land cover information, you need not give the seasonal land use land cover information, but you can update your model with every 15 days vegetation fraction that can be generated out of the satellite data, which is available. And this is what uh, uh, the INSAT 3A CCD, the total vegetation damage, this is done by our sister uh, center, SAC. These things are also available. So, in addition to just acquiring the data, what I was telling is, Satellite data, though we acquire, there are certain constraints of the satellite data because of the short duration span and uh, there are certain uh, uncertainties attached to it because of the algorithms, what we use. And afterwards, when we generate a parameter, this parameter will be put into some models. They will be also subjected to certain assumptions. So because of these things, there are uncertainties will rise. So we need to force and we need to calibrate the models. So we have established certain agrometeorological systems uh, for around 2025 20, such agroecological meteorological towers have been kept uh, and for uh, observing the especially the carbon pool which is especially required for telling about the carbon sequestration whether we are acting as a source or a sink uh, we have established certain flux towers and this forest damage on every day soon after we get the satellite data this is from the modis data we develop it within less than an hour these fire spots are generated and then they have be, they will be transmitted to the user they are happening and because forest damage fires are going to affect the aerosols once again.
so and those things also have to be seen. And 2004 to 2012, all that land use on every year basis it is there. So if anybody wants to use it, they can use it. And certain other things they are under development or water bodies fraction is under development. Snow cover area, already we have developed the algorithm. By this algorithm, it can be made available and it can be, uh, the products can be made available and they can be used in different models. And water spread dynamics is one important thing, which we have already uh, standardized the procedures. Now we are in the process of uh, standardizing the things. Someone was telling about the soil moisture yesterday, so I thought, let me put this slide. So daily soil moisture, uh, already ESA, that is European Space Agency, under its uh, climate change uh, initiative, is keeping 13 uh, uh, ECVs, of which daily data is available on a quarter grid basis. They have reprocessed the total data right from 1970s tyrosine till 2011. And this is using all both active and passive micro radiometers and sensors. And these are very useful data. And having seen all this, uh, what all the that satellite is able to provide, the, but still we do realize that there are spatial temporal mismatching is there. That means the modelers require the spatial temporal information in a particular way and whereas it is available in a different way. And inadequate spatial resolution temporal